Would you like a tour of the 1-6 scale G.I. Joe Adventure Team bunker that I just made? We'll stick around. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is Paul Knapp coming to you once again from the Man Cave. And I've just finished the first ever 1-6 scale diorama that I ever made. I usually just make 1-12 scale dioramas for individuals and this time I wanted to make something for my 1-6 scale figures, uh, specifically for the Adventure Team. And I'm calling this the Adventure Team Underground Bunker. Uh, I don't want to call it a headquarters. There's no windows in this. Uh, it looks more like an underground bunker to me. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to give you a tour with uh, equipment in it and without equipment. So we're going to start without the equipment to show you how I built this. Let's go. Okay, so it is a beautiful Friday afternoon here in Virginia Beach. I have the garage doors open so you may hear some neighbors walk by you may hear some jets flying over from the Navy base but here it is this is the base of the bunker if you will these are three 18 inches by 18 inches foam pieces you can see I just cut and beveled the grooves to look like you know larger tiles I guess you could say um, there are three of these I inlaid the magnets so everything is magnetized everything can come apart so you're looking at uh, what 54 inches long by 18 inches deep and the walls are 14 inches high and I have the magnets on the bottom so this would be the left side if you will and that just snaps into place and they hold pretty pretty tight you can see the uh, the wire or piping or that I put along the top and uh, those are just plastic straws uh, and connector tubes. You can buy those on uh, Amazon or sometimes you can find them at the dollar store. So nothing special there. Just kind of kind of com computer at the bottom of that. I was thinking of those as being uh, computer wires in the wall. Now the design that I used on the wall, this kind of just came to me. I just you know didn't really do anything special. It wasn't a copy of anything. I was thinking of the danger room from the X-Men, if you know of that pattern, I guess. But uh, yeah, I just uh, painted it all black and then did a white overwash brush, I guess you could say. Uh, dry brush on top of that, so. And then this wall here, I did make a, uh, it's hard to tell, but that is uh, out further than, than the uh, flat wall there, so. So that's one side. I'll go ahead and get the other uh, sides put on. So this would be the right side. I made this kind of the uh, comms area, if you will. I did mount those desktops at a slight angle. Kind of goofed up my measurements. I'm not sure how I did that, but it's hard to tell from here. So I'm just going with it. I already glued it. And then when I brought put it together, it didn't really line up perfectly, but not too, too worried about that. Um, I did put these extra posts in here to kind of cover up, you know, where you would see, you know, that's not magnetized to the next one. So I guess I could put a magnet in there to hold it tighter, but um, you'll see when I put the center wall in, everything really lines up. So I just put these beams in here, and that's why I made it look more like a uh, underground bunker. Because there's no windows in this thing, you know, and it is pretty large. So, um, yeah. That is the uh, underground bunker. This will be the uh, base of it. And then I'll go ahead and uh, put that center wall in. And you can see once that center wall is in, it snugs everything up nice and tight. So even though these aren't attached to each other, you know, as you can see, I can pull them apart if I want. Once they're next to each other, everything's at a 90 degree angle for the most part. And everything hooks up pretty, pretty nicely. And then finally for this door, I was going to do a swinging door of sorts and I thought, you know, if this is kind of futuristic, they would have glass doors. So this is a uh, just a piece of plexiglass that I purchased and I cut and uh, I can get it to slide in here usually. So it'll either be in or out. I don't think I'll be sliding it back and forth very often, but just put a piece of... Uh, black electrical tape on each end and uh, 
Yeah, so this this area is always going to stay the comms area, I guess, because that's glued to the wall, all the uh, computer boards and whatnot. This area, I'm going to have kind of a, a laboratory area or headquarters room or conference room, if you will. And then this area is going to be constantly changing. Um, I'm going to have it a, a bunk room, uh, a jail cell area, a storage area. So depending upon how I want the photo story to go, um, it'll just be a, an adjacent room to the comms room. And I can constantly change that out to look like different rooms in the bunker. So let me get some of the uh, equipment in here and show you what it looks like. So before I go ahead and start placing all the storage items and the 3D printed things that I purchased from several uh, individuals, I wanted to show you what the room would look like. If I just made this the storage area, these are two just basic storage racks that I made. Now this black set is made out of balsa wood with just that granny knitted, I don't know what you call it, plastic that you can buy at uh, um, Michael's. It's like in a knitting area. It comes in different colors, but you can paint it. It's soft plastic. It's pretty cheap. So I made two of those out of wood, and then these two I made out of plastic. I uh, just uh, purchased uh, plastic square tubes and uh, glued that together. These ones I made to actually fit in there and I painted these with the hammered um, spray paint. So they kind of look like steel tubing, I guess you could call it. I used the same spray paint on this uh, tube up here. So yeah, um, so these were two homemade items or four homemade items, however you want to look at it. This table I purchased uh, on eBay. can't remember who made that, um, but I thought it would be a nice conference table area. So let me go ahead and uh, get the rest of the gear and maybe get some figures in here to show you what it looks like. And just by removing the shelving units and the storage equipment, this can easily be turned into a bunk room. Uh, this is a locker, just a simple chair, and the bunk. I believe this is made by the World Peacekeepers set, uh, so you know the size of those bunk beds in the locker. And just taking out the table in here and putting the other equipment on the racks, that gives you a lot more room on the communication side so quick change and it becomes a totally different room And the third option I had for this room would be the jail cell, the holding container that Jim Egner made for me. 
you guys know how large that abominable snowman is that just gives you an idea how large this cage is it is just slightly above 14 inches maybe 14 and a quarter these walls are 14 high but you can see it easily fits that abominable snowman is still he's not touching the top of the cage so so yeah I really enjoy this uh, my all-purpose room that I can convert into anything of course this room pretty much the uh, comms room since this is permanently on the wall but this area here could be anything I guess so I hope you enjoyed this